record. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on when you're listening to this. I'm Kevin Stafford, your host for the Coffee with Coaches podcast. And today I have with me Thomas Chapel. As a former active Marine, Tom has dedicated his life to service. In the 90s, he started and lost a business, then became homeless. With determination, Tom turned his life around. Today, he coaches leaders on getting through complex change, making better decisions, being more confident, and achieving their purpose. You know, just, just all in a day's work, I suppose. Thomas, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Kevin. Pleasure to be here. Well, as I like to sometimes say, let's begin at the beginning. What brought you into coaching? What really prompted you to begin a coaching business, to do this, not just for a living, but for a life? Yeah, so I actually started out in a totally different career at the consulting. Hmm. And over time, you develop cross skills between technology and, and business savvy. And people just start just started asking me, you know, what my thoughts were on it. And I ended up mentoring several major clients along the path. And some of them have now turned out to be a major leaders within Deloitte and many of them within the higher levels of government, some of them even political folks. And I just kind of found that they tended to come to me because I didn't spend all the time telling them what I knew, but kind of helped them walk through and get in, get in and out of their head as, as necessary to get what they, what they needed to kind of move forward. Very key distinction there. A lot of people, some people like to be told what to do. They want the prescription. But especially in higher level, levels of leadership, I find personally, and I'm sure you do too, that there's much more of a discovery process that people are looking for. They want to discover what it is that's going to work for them, what it is that's going to help them level up their life, so to speak, or be more productive, whatever it is their purpose happens to be. Right. And remove the anchors whenever they, you know, to kind of get them over a speed bump, you know. Remove, remove the anchors. I like that. Anchors can ground you. Anchors can also hold you back. It's an interesting analogy. Right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, you mentioned your clients are largely, uh, you're based in the sort of the DMV area, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah Delaware, I'm, Maryland. Uh, DR area. Yeah. So, so yeah, we do most all my customers and clients, you know, I call them, they're more than clients to me now. <laughs> I think that's just part of the relationship piece that a lot of them are very close friends now. So, yeah. It's tough that word clients, you know, cause it's, it's so impersonal, but it's, it's mm -hmm. sort of like a starter word, almost like when you've Say you've been in a, in a romantic relationship for a long time, but you're not married or engaged yet, but it's been, you know, it's been a number of years or whatever. And you just have that boyfriend, girlfriend word that seems so, it, it doesn't really capture anything about the relationship, but it's the one, it's the word you've got. So it's what you use and client. I always end up feeling two different ways about it because it feels so impersonal for such a personal connection. Right. And, and I think that you quickly, I think that's part of the coach's job is to kind of bridge that middle ground in between from customer to, to that more personal relationship, however you want to name that. But that's part of the coach's job is to kind of bridge it and help it, help it get there. Because otherwise, it's hard to be effective. It is. Speaking of effective, uh, you obviously have a thriving coaching business. What's it all about right now? What's the, what are the, the core offerings, so to speak, of your practice as it stands today? Yeah, so I tend to... Right now, be concentrating around a lot of leaders that are dealing in the technology arena. So they're dealing with some, like, China breaking in behind a firewall and, and you know, how do they deal with that, the fallout from that? How do they do the recovery? Uh, all the way down to performance uh, level uh, issues that, uh, that they may feel about themselves or that their bosses have made told them that, hey, you need some sort of coaching to learn how to talk to people. Uh, you know, I've got uh, several folks that are, that have had to walk that path and it's not easy because uh, a lot of people don't like working within the government confines because there's a lot of closed conversations that have to happen and you can't exactly put that out on a, on a podcast or put it out on a, on a blog somewhere that, yeah, Hey, I helped them solve X, Y, Z problems, you know? <laughs> so, so yeah, from, from the coaching perspective, they, a lot of them try to right now are dealing with major issues that are founded and set by the political agendas that, that thrive here in the DCA area. So 
sounds like a very narrow path to have to walk. Cause I mean, it's obviously like you, like you were getting at there before, not only is, is any form of self-promotion very difficult because there's so much that you can't say, but there's also, I mean, I imagine being a coach, I mean, a lot of, a lot of what you help people to do is to discover and connect with both themselves and who they are and how they can be their better selves, but also how to connect with their team, their people, who either who they work for or who works for them or work with, you raise the level of the team. And that's, that's usually some pretty heavy, like emotional, honest work. And it could be very difficult, I imagine, threading that needle, the only being able to say what you're allowed to say and share what you're allowed to share while also building meaningful high level connections with the people around you and with yourself. Right. Well, and, and you have, you hit the nail on the head right there. It was, it's really about being able to kind of communicate that with those folks. Cause think about this, you're having to respond to an emergency at three o'clock in the morning and respond to that call. Now somehow, some way you've got to get 400 of all of other employees to engage with that, not including all the contractors that are paid to be there hmm. to try to get and solve a problem. And, you know, whether it's communication or whether it's, you know, whether it's performance capabilities, I mean, they, they get measured on so many things. And I know a lot of folks think that government work is easy, but it's not, it's not as easy as you think. I mean, there's, there's all these agendas that they have to work through and how to navigate it. And I, I, I tell some people, I, I feel kind of like one of those folks that take you out into the jungle, out onto a jungle hunt, you know, <laughs> sometimes because you never know what you're going to run into whenever you get there, but you better be prepared for it all. A great, a great a synonym for, for coach is guide, because yeah. there, there, there's a lot of guides, not necessarily leading, at least not in, the, in, in a more traditional sort of straight line sense, but there's a lot of yep. guidance going on where it's like, you know, there's 175,000 things that could kill you in a second. Um, but if we stay on this path right here, and maybe we could take this branch over here and branch over there, don't go off the path, but let's go, let's go discover what's on the other side of that hill or around that, you know, around that path. Yeah. It's, 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 it's exciting, but also a little scary sometimes, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had to answer the call two o'clock in the morning, getting on the horn with them or, or getting on a, uh, you know, getting a call from somebody that needed me to be in another, another state and another city you know, to kind of work with them on something. So, so yeah, yeah it's it, it, but that's what service is about, right? Our part of our purpose is discovering that purpose and getting it, you know, we call it calling, but I think it's where we really drive our life, you know, at the end of the day, otherwise, you know, what are we doing? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I, I like calling because there's definitely, it almost feels like you hear something. There's just like your senses can pick up on a tangible, pull. like there's a pull, something literally calling you to that service, to that work. It's, as you might expect, a commonality across everyone I talk to in this business. It's everyone in one way or another has heard and chooses to answer that call. And again, that's what mm -hmm. you're getting at right there, that, that willingness to show up, to be available when the need presents itself. Not a couple hours later, not, you know, on schedule, not on the calendar, but when the need arises. So it really separates a real, a true, I think, a true coach, a true guide from people who might just be maybe looking to help themselves. But we don't really talk to those people here. We talk to people like you. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I've, I've just talking to you for these few minutes. I've gotten, I've gotten a very strong, positive vibe from you. Vibe for lack of a better word, because obviously there's more to it than that. But yeah, I don't mean to make a make any assumptions, but I like you. I think I'm going to continue to like you. <laughs> I like um, you too, man. Before I let you go, just looking to the future, obviously you have a thriving practice right now with tons of clients. What's next? Next year, next maybe eight, 12 to 18 months or so. Do you have like, do you have any courses you might be launching? Any, I mean, I don't know if you're writing a book. It seems like every other person I talk to is either just did or is about to, or something like that. But like, do you have anything coming up on the horizon for your practice? Yeah, so actually I do. I am working on some expansion ideas. I One of the things that makes my coaching a little different is that I have a practice of foresight with it, so futures, and that's part of the delineation of my coaching and what makes it different. So I am expanding on that because now with all the changes that you see in the news and things of that nature, futures are changing and, you know, it's time now to help the government get ready for not just today's change, but for tomorrow's change that's coming. 
because you know the commercial world and all private industry they put out a lot of stuff right but the government is a buyer of that stuff but we're in competition with other countries so don't be fooled by the fact that 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 you know we all shake hands and play nice nice with each other in front of the camera <laughs> you know there's a lot of other stuff going on so we have to be aware and and wise and wise enough to know that you know we need to figure out how to how do we keep america at the at the forefront because how many other countries are you seeing like america that's helping so many or trying to help so many people we may not be successful all the time <laughs> but you know that's part of the mission that's part of that that's part of what America stands for is to help help each other out, not just Americans, others too. Willingness to help even if we even if we fail, a willingness to fail in service of that urge to help to be of that cause. Service. That's right. Absolutely. So yeah, I intend to help that mission keep moving forward. And I actually would like to be able to kind of give back to a lot of these private schools, because I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of the private schools stepped in to help kids that were in public schools. You know, so I'd like to be able to use some of the revenue sources that I have to be able to kind of, you know, God's blessed me, I'd like to pass it forward and and help push that, you know, because it that's our future. You can't mess around with our future. You know, someday you and I are going to be old men and we're going to be sitting on the on the bench watching, watching the very people we're talking about run this country. What do you mean someday? I already feel like an old man. <laughs> but but you're young up here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm young up here and I'm young, I'm young down here too. <laughs> well, Tom, I feel like I could talk to you for, for hours, but I think we'll wrap it up there, if that's all right. And all right. your website is breakthroughs.com. Did I get that right? Yep. Break.com. Group. I forgot the group. That's right. Yep. Is there anywhere else people can find you? LinkedIn, obviously. Anywhere else? Yep. LinkedIn. I'm 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 out on LinkedIn, and if you go out to the website, it'll I can get emails easily. LinkedIn. I'm under Thomas Chapel. There's also a page for Breakthrough Strategies Group on LinkedIn. So, yeah, I'm I'm here to serve. So, even if I always tell people, even if you choose not to work with me, or I or, or vice versa, call me because I can help prepare you for the for those folks that would be the ones that you would choose. Service takes many shapes and being That's adaptable right. is a big part of being a good servant. I love to hear yeah. that. Thank you. Thank you, the audience, for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you.